Welcome to Downtown Sports. My name is Downtown Stephen Brown. It's been a couple of days, but the dust has kind of settled on what the NHL is proposing and trying to do. And even the team's Twitter accounts are tweeting out that this is official now. So I guess we're just going to roll with it. And I kind of answered this question in my previous video, taking a look at the initial proposal of a 2014 playoff where I went through my own little bracket and gave my own opinion on each individual series. And then I took a look at the Columbus Blue Jackets potential lineup, talked about their team and their season for a little bit, and then the Toronto Maple Leafs and their season for a little bit and the potential lineup that they could ice come play in time. I guess it's not play off, it's play in now but i figured i would make a standalone video here because as i was looking at the numbers um toronto might be in trouble here and hey i mean even if the toronto maple leafs were facing up against this year's detroit red wings i think some people would still have some concerns on whether or not they would beat them in a five game series but the columbus blue jackets are nowhere near this year's detroit red wings so why don't we just jump into the numbers and take a look at who the maple leafs are going up against and if we just take a glance at the NHL standings before the season stoppage happened, we're going to look at the Columbus Blue Jackets and we're going to see their record in their last 10 games of 3-4-3. Three, and three, And that's not very good. But you're going to take a look at their negative 7 goal differential and you're going to tell yourself, well... That's not very good either. The Toronto Maple Leafs are a positive 11, as you can see on the screen there. But you could also take a look at the fact that if the NHL just did a 16-team playoff and just sorted it by points percentage, that the New York Islanders would actually leapfrog them because the Columbus Blue Jackets are the number nine seed here. But I figured it would be important to show these two things in the video. That's why I'm adding them in after the fact. That's why you're going to see me wearing different clothes now, and then it's going to go back afterwards. But since Sheldon Keith became the head coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs, these are the NHL standings. The Maple Leafs at eighth in the NHL in terms of points percentage, and the Columbus Blue Jackets at number 10. And this is a hearty sample size. I mean, most teams only ended up playing between like 68 and 71 games or so in the NHL this year. And you can see here, most teams are at about 48 49 or 50 or so so that's about like 75 or 80 percent of the season played and these are two top 10 teams so it's going to be a good series either way and especially considering i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna keep repeating myself but especially because both teams are healthy and this is from dom lucian dom does a bunch of analytical stuff for the athletic just He's helped me win a little bit of money betting on some games here and there. So I trust these numbers. Um, the Maple Leafs at 63% to win the play. And not only do I trust Dom because he's helped me win a little bit of money, but he's also got my favorite team winning. So these numbers are 100% valid and correct and the only ones that we should look at. But just looking at those numbers are not enough to determine anything here. If we go over to naturalstatric.com and we take a look at the NHL standings from January 1st, so New Year's, Onwards, the Columbus Blue Jackets were the seventh best team in the entire National Hockey League by points percentage. If we were to sort this by save percentage, they are fourth with a 932 team save percentage from January 1st onwards. If we take a look at their CF percentage over a larger sample size here, not necessarily the greatest of teams. If we take a look at the scoring chances for and the scoring chances against, I mean, they are getting outchanced at 5-on-5. Five five. If you're looking at the expected goals for, the expected goals aren't on their side either. If we're taking a look at the Columbus Blue Jackets, what they do possess, though, is some of the best goaltending in the entire National Hockey League. Elvis Merzlikens and Jonas Corbusalo were carrying this Columbus Blue Jackets team that was reeling from losing Artemi Panarin in the offseason and guys like Matt Duchesne and Ryan Dezingle, but also had guys like Seth Jones and Cam Atkinson and Josh Anderson injured for a very, very long time. So when we take a look at those advanced analytics, we have to understand that they were a team that were injured a lot all season long, and they're going to be healthy now. And when we're taking a look at the Toronto Maple Leafs over the same time span, they were 14-11-4 for a points percentage that would put them 18th in the league from January 1st onwards. And when you're looking at the Columbus Blue Jackets, it's really easy to point out all the injuries that they had and then not give Toronto the benefit of the doubt and look at the injuries that they had. But when you're looking at them, they also had guys like Zach Wierenski, who was injured for about four weeks or so with some type of shoulder injury. So it's going to be really interesting to see how these teams perform healthy. And when you're looking at this stretch from the Toronto Maple Leafs going 14, 11, and 4, it was widely regarded as one of the worst stretches that they had all season long, aside from the first 
23 games that Mike Babcock coached the team where they went 9, 10, and 4. And when we take a look at the advanced analytics for the Toronto Maple Leafs from New Year's onwards, we're going to see that they were controlling the majority of the shot attempts for. They were controlling the majority of the expected goals. They were controlling the majority of the scoring chances at 5 on 5. But if we take a look at these numbers here, you're going to be asking yourself, well, Stephen, what are the Toronto Maple Leafs first in from January 1st onwards? And I'm just going to be blatantly honest with you. These stats are inverted and it's save percentage here. So they're not actually first. They're 31st in the league in save percentage over that time period. And that's because Frederick Anderson had a save percentage at five on five. So not even counting the penalty kill here of 897. And if you're going from January 6th onward, which is a statistic that I've shown here a couple of times on the channel, it gets even worse. It goes down to 892. And when we're looking at something as delicate as a five game series, um, it's very easy to get PDO'd. And what I mean by PDO, it is just goalies having an absolute shutdown performance or an absolute shoddy performance or just one player just absolutely catching fire. Um, there's a lot more luck element involved in a five-game series than there is a seven-game series or even a full 82-game season. So for the Toronto Maple Leafs here, it really is going to boil down to whether Frederick Anderson has gotten his shit together. Yes, and I understand that the defense has been a problem this season and the year before that and the year before that one, but I refuse to believe that even with Jake Muzzin, Cody Ceci, and Morgan Riley injured for the majority of that sample size where Frederick Anderson had a five on five save percentage below 900 i refuse to believe that that team was worse defensively without those three defenders than the 12 13 randy carlisle coach toronto maple leafs where james reimer put up like a 923 or a 921 save percentage in front of and I refuse to believe that the defense was so bad in front of Frederick Anderson that Michael Hutchison somehow, somehow had a save percentage 17 points higher than him at 5-on-5 five five with very much just about the same defense in front of him. And I refuse to believe that Jack Campbell was capable of posting a save percentage 31 points higher than Frederick Anderson with just about the same defense in front of it. I refuse to believe that it was 100% the defense. I'm pinning this 65-35. 65% on the goaltending, 65% of the problem was Frederick Anderson, 35% of the problem was the defense. And if this Frederick Anderson shows up in this five-game series... The Toronto Maple Leafs are going to lose in three games. But if the Frederick Anderson of old shows up and he's able to be that goaltender that has been that consistent force for the last four or five seasons and post the save percentage of around 917 to 919, then the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to destroy the Columbus Blue Jackets. And my proof of that is in the standings ever since Sheldon Keefe took over the Toronto Maple Leafs. I showed this earlier, but the Leafs are at 8th here and the Columbus Blue Jackets are at 10th overall in terms of points percentage. But the difference in these two two teams just in terms of save percentage is astronomical and it's amazing that the Toronto Maple Leafs were able to be this high in the standings with the eighth worst goaltending over this time period and if we just scroll over here we're going to see the difference in the save percentage I got to scroll over on OBS here so just a second and you're going to see the Toronto Maple Leafs here at about 913 and the Columbus Blue Jackets here at about 923 924. And I mean, to put it into perspective, if you're thinking about the Vesna Trophy race, right, if a goaltender had a save percentage of 924, he's probably going to be one of those top three candidates. Now, if a goalie has a save percentage of around 913, what is he? mediocre to bad he's nowhere near the Vesna voting I think that Toronto can make this series very very interesting if Frederick Anderson is just able to play as well as Michael Hutchison had at 5 on 5 over that same period I think that they will push the series to four or five games and it will be a really close one as we talked about in the metrics there, both teams were severely injured over that time frame, and yet the Toronto Maple Leafs were the better team at 5-on-5. Five five. They controlled the scoring chances, they controlled the expected goals for, they controlled the shot attempts, they were the better team. But when your goalies are posting a 932 save percentage, yeah, you can very easily overcome some weak underlying advanced metrics. 
And I know that we shouldn't be underestimating the team that took down Tampa Bay last year in four games, but those aren't the same Columbus Blue Jackets. They don't have Artemi Panarin, and they don't have Matt Duchesne. And they likely also won't have Josh Anderson. The Toronto Maple Leafs are going to have everybody at 100% health, aside from Andreas Janssen. The only thing that scares me when it comes to the Columbus Blue Jackets is their goaltending. And I'm not going to lie to you, there's a lot of reasons why you should be scared of their goaltending. They don't just got one of them, they got two of them that are absolutely insane. But if I could take an objective look at this series and take off my glasses, even though I'm not wearing them right now, and I'll look at this without blue tinted glasses or the leaf stuff here, I'm still saying that the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to win this series. But let me know down in the comment section what your thoughts are on this series and make sure to leave me a like on the video if you did like it and subscribe for more because more is always on the way because guys, the Toronto Maple Leafs are not only going to beat the Columbus Blue Jackets, but they're also going to beat whoever they play in the first round of the playoffs, the second round of the playoffs as well, and they are going to the Eastern Conference Finals this year. I'm not saying that they're going any further than that, but I'm telling you, they're getting through.